First of all, I love the night of. Oh, man. Oh, so man. do I. Thank how, you. How good is that? <laughs> Fucking excellent, yo. <laughs> like, I love it. I, and I know just as much as you know. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't get the whole script. So I'm sure only a handful of people really know what the result is going to be. So yeah, uh, I'm on the edge just like everybody else. Hell of a story. Uh, hell of an acting job from everyone. From the cops to the detective to Nas to the family to, to everyone. Excellently cast. That's what that is. That's casting. Because I was watching even just certain little... Like, there was this one lady, she was like, oh, yeah, they was online, right? And the father thought he can go online so that they could go visit him. Mm -hmm. But then the mother had to get online, too. And just the whole attitude of the lady that was like, tell her to get back online. It's just so authentic. Like, like they really hit the mark with this one. Yeah. And, like, the whole... Sort of like the real like asshole quality of the That's NYPD. That's what I'm talking about. It just the like, whole system. Yeah, get back in the car. Shut. Don't worry about it. Shut up. And it's like oh, I remember NYPD talking to me like this for no for no apparent reason, just because they could. And this is what I'm telling you. Yeah. And just like when you go on a visit and all of that, like they want to make it um, an unpleasant experience. Yeah. You see, so that there'll be a disconnect between you and probably your family members, so that you won't want to go there. Yeah. You got to wait online two hours or some shit just to see somebody for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever the case would be. Like, it, shit is crazy. So speaking of Karis one he recently... <sighs> he recently did a talk that was uh, recorded. We put up the video. And they asked him about Africa Bambada. And Karis one has been defending Africa Bambata in a, in a couple of interviews. And he said that anyone who's a critic of Africa Bambata should quit hip hop. He said our hip hop leadership has to be untouchable. He says that some of hip hop's leaders are infallible and should stay beyond disapproval or else the culture will die. Okay. I love KRS One. <laughs> He's my hip hop elder. Okay, I came up looking up to him. Yes. Which is why I'm not going to say anything except I don't agree. That's it. I'm not going to talk shit about KRS. I'm not going to, you know what I mean, get into all of that. I'm just going to say I don't agree with that statement. I don't think any sort of leadership should be untouchable. I, th I think that every, every man and woman has to be held accountable for their actions. Violating children is something that no culture agrees with, anywhere in the world. Yes, there is different, you know, uh, ages of consent and so forth, but whatever the age is in that area, to go below that age is, is frowned upon. Universally. Well, some ages, some some places, though, the age is pretty damn low, though. <laughs> well, in the South, it goes down to, like, what, 13, 14 or something? Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I, I, I've said before, you know, Greek and Roman culture, there's a thing called pederasty, and that's strictly older man with a prepubescent boy. So what is that? Yeah. 10, 11, 12? That's yeah. not cool, but that was accepted in those cultures. That was normal. That was some well, normal shit. Well, in certain, in certain, um, you know, more of like the, the the hardcore Mormon societies, you know, it's standard for the older men to have the younger girls, and you know, what I'm saying like like a lot of that was covered in uh, you know that show Big Love mm -hmm. on uh, mm -hmm. HBO you know, on, on H HBO or Showtime. I forgot which one it was. It was HBO, I think. Big Love, yeah. That was HBO. and. Uh, the standards are different, but whatever the standard is to go Below younger that, than that right, standard right. is is considered yeah, foul, foul by everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. With Although this whole thing. these young, you know, these guys at the age that they said it happened would fall under that pederast age 
You understand what I'm saying? For the people that are into that shit, that's the prime age that they was at. How 15 old? or some shit like that. Oh, that they that's was. how old they were? Yeah, yeah, I think they was like 15, 16, 17, all around that area. You know what I mean? So... But still, that's a that's a vulnerable age. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it was right or nothing like that. I'm just saying, like, in that pederast culture, that was a prime age for them. You know what I mean? They definitely didn't think they doing nothing wrong if they into that. But real quick, I just wanted to say, you know, there's a, there's a saying that says, um, absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So this is why you can't have leadership that's infallible, infallible, untouchable, like, you know, because that can just lead to some crazy shit. Like, I mean, we were talking about Hitler a little while ago yeah. and, you know, that's the kind of power he had, that infallible, absolute power type shit. Look what the fuck that got motherfuckers. Right. Look at, uh, you know, North Korea. And you look like Kim Jong Il, you know, who died. Right. And uh, I remember reading that he was actually the number one individual consumer of Hennessy in the world. <laughs> he would order just gallons and gallons. And he, I heard he had baths filled with Hennessy. Wow. And, like, just take, you know, Hennessy uh, baths. Hennessy baths. And, you know, That's just, crazy. just well, wild shit. Sting you. Because, yeah, because he just. There, he had no limits. He could do whatever he wanted. He he controlled the country. Mm. You know, I heard he had little boys in there too. But you know, we'll never know about that. Uh, Dunking them in the Hennessy. <laughs> yeah, Marco, Polo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible, man. What do you think about the whole situation, man? My point of view, man. I really feel like they tried to paint him bad picture on my brother and try to make him look like like he was a hater or uh, it was some envy jealousy type shit you know what I'm saying and actuality you know what I'm saying bro been having this shit man he been in the condo I got my hat on and I had my coke bottles up under my hat and I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on knowing she gonna tell me to take it off and I'm just sitting there just gawping down you know in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coat everywhere. 